Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to look at one verse. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. The title of the message is Spiritual Exercise. Spiritual Exercise. Spiritual Exercise. I could hear people. I could see people. When you hear the word exercise, you get different type of responses. Spiritual exercise. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. For bodily exercise profit is little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. Spiritual exercise. When you hear the word exercise, uh, you could just look at your belly and see, you know, how much exercise you do. You could look at yourself in the mirror and see if you go along well with exercise. Exercise is needed in your life. It's not something that you could ignore, especially as you get older in age, you need more exercise. You know, your metabolism gets slower, your organs you know, function not like it used to, your joints are you know, tearing apart or you know, wearing down, yeah. and your body is sluggish. Right. You need exercise. It will keep your major organs function properly in the first place. You know, bodily exercise I'm talking about. You know, it relaxes the nerves, right? And then relaxes and the rest of the mind. And if you do exercise, it adds, you know, years to your life. And if you're not exercising and if you're just, you know, eating, sleeping, working, playing like that, you're going to die. You know? Obviously, if you can't go to, if you're having problems in the bathroom, you know, sometimes it's resolved because you exercise. It aids digestion, you know, it aids in elimination. I mean, haven't you guys had a lot of times where you ate so much, it was a great meal, you sit down on your sofa or lie down on your bed, and it's hard to breathe, right? And also it's hard to move. And digestion system isn't working because, you know, it's supposed to be top to bottom. You can't expect it to be perpendicular or, you know, even backwards. And of course, you know, bodily exercise tends to stop depression and discouragement. So, I mean, we know that as a Bible believer, you do have many times where you get discouraged and you get depressed. To exercise, you know, it's some of the solutions, right? We know reading the Bible, studying the Word of God, listening to preaching, witnessing will help, right? Definitely will help. But sometimes God gave you different ways to get encouragement and get out of depression and dis- discouragement. Yeah. Exercise. Yeah. You know. If you like to run, go outside and run. You know. If you like to play sports, go outside and play sports, indoors or outdoors. If you like to go to gym, go to the gym and exercise. Right? I mean, we have some you know, exercise buffs here. You know, he's yeah. sitting right there. Right? <laughs> you know, they get their, you know, what is it? They have runners high. They have some weightlifting high, you know. It's something good for your physical body. However, when it comes to spiritual exercise, I mean, when you apply it to your life, I mean, do you take it seriously? If you don't even take your bodily exercise seriously, many times you don't take your spiritual exercise seriously. 
Because exercise requires discipline. Exercise requires effort. Exercise requires sacrifice, right? Majority of the people don't like to go out there and run for hours and hours because it hurts, because it doesn't feel good. Majority of the people don't like to, you know, bench press or lift weights because it hurts. It's heavy, right? Majority of the people would rather just sit back, lie down on your sofa, on your bed, you know, comfortable chair, and just rest. You know? Like, everybody wants to just rest. I had a big, you know, presentation at work. My job, you know, I had to work with some horrible people. School work is hard. You know, I'm having issues, you know, relationship-wise. So you know what? Just leave me alone. I'm just going to just rest. I'm just going to sit. I'm just going to relax, right? Well, how many times have you told anybody or you heard people say, you know, I'm just going to relax today? I mean, you've been relaxing. Oh, it's May, right? In the May. How many days have you been relaxing? Many. How many days have you been, you know, actually going out there and exercising? That's why, you know, it's not a 100% success formula, but as a Bible believer, you have to take care of your body. And when you do take care of your body, a lot of times it translates into a spiritual, healthy body as well. Yes. A lot of people, you know, tend to think that, okay, you know, my body is just, you know, just dead. It's old nature. I'm just going to just concentrate on spiritual things. I'm going to pray and pray and pray. I'm going to pray five hours a day. I'm going to go witness three hours a day. And I'm going to listen to all these great preachings and Bible studies, you know, on the Internet for another five hours per day. What do you think is going to happen to your body? It's going to deteriorate. It's going to get worse. Then how do you keep that up? If you want to do the work of the Lord, your body has to be strong as well, That's true. right? That's why you can't take any of your health for granted in the first place. Yes. In order to do spiritual exercise as well, you can't take anything for granted. Like if you're a physical exercise, you can't take for granted that you could breathe, Amen. you could move, you yes. could bend down. Yes. I mean, think about it. We know people who can't bend down. Right. They can't put any pressure on their back. Why? Because they got hurt. Yes. Or, you know, because for various reasons. Then you should never take anything for granted. When it comes to spiritual exercise, don't take it for granted that if I don't do spiritual exercise, it's okay. It's not okay. I mean, if you don't exercise spiritually on a daily basis, you're just like how your body gets worse and worse and worse, it becomes harder and harder for you to breathe. It becomes harder and harder for you to run and do any type of those, you know, intense activities. Same thing. If you don't exercise daily, spiritually speaking, what's going to happen? You're going to be deader than ever before. You're going to be lazier than ever before. You're going to be more immovable than ever before. That's why when you hear somebody say, all right, honey, let's go out and let's pass out some tracks. No. I'm going to relax. You do your thing. Kid goes, Daddy. You know, I, I had a great time at street preaching. You know, I want to go out there and do some spiritual exercise. You know, let's go, let's go somewhere. Let's go to the corner. You know, let's, you know, do our own street preaching. Amen. Because, ah, it's time to relax. You know, we, we only do it, you know, when church does it. Right. Any other those things come up, you tend to just ignore it. You only exercise spiritually maybe on a Sunday, maybe on Wednesday, maybe on Friday. Maybe summer camp only, right? I mean, you guys should not become a crowd only exercise spiritually on summer camp time and jubilee time. Right. Uh, how are you more different than CEO crowd, right? Christmas and Easter. Right. That's when they think that they do something. That's when they think that they're doing some kind of exercise. But however, as a Bible-believing Christian, especially if you're saved from eternal lake of fire, and if you have Jesus Christ in you, and if you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, you have to exercise on a daily basis. Amen. And that has to be something that you can't take for granted. You have to honor it. 
You have to embrace it, yes. and you have to be thankful for it, Amen. and you have to actually take action. You know, don't be hearers only, but, you know, you've got to be doers. Amen. Every one of you would agree with me that some form of exercise is good for you. Yes. Who doesn't think it's good for you, right? Some form. Because, you know, there's always smart Alec goes, you know, I don't want to be bench pressing 200 pounds. It's bad for me. No, some form of exercise is good for everyone. Yes. Based on everything that I mentioned. You know it. But how many of you guys actually do it? How many of you guys actually, you know, back almost five months ago in January, made a New Year's resolution? Like, you know what? This year, I'm going to exercise better. I'm actually going to, you know, commit myself to exercising. Right? I'm going to walk more. I mean, walking is the best exercise. Right? If you're... You could walk your neighborhood, you could go to the park, you could go to, you know, any, any place, and you could walk, right? You could go to the malls, you could go to, you know, supermarkets, department store, you could walk. And especially, you know, if God has still given you grace to walk, then you got to take that advantage. Yes. You have to walk. Amen. You have to do something about it. However, how many of you guys do that? Don't tell me you're going to do something for the Lord if you don't do something for the Holy Ghost, That's good. temple of Holy God. You know, many times people forget that, you know what, you know, my body is the temple of Holy Ghost and I have to take care of it. All you think about is that, you know what, I'm just going to go out there and preach the word. I'm going to go out there and preach the gospel. I'm going to go out there and study and study and study. So spiritually speaking, your knowledge is really growing. However, it's getting puffed up. And what happens is that once your body crashes because you didn't take care of it, then you start blaming God. God, you know I study Bible night and day. I watch those videos, everything about sons of God, you know, Gap, everything, you know, Revelation, all those heavy, deep doctrine, something that you don't even share with nobody. I mean, you don't really get to do it but because you want to feel like, you know, you know more than anybody. Not that I'm discouraging it, but think about the motivation and the purpose why you're listening to it. Because many times just people just try to listen to those to tell others, and they look like you're smarter. Listen to, you know, you know Dr. Jim Kim's videos, right? And the videos in our channel, and like suddenly like you're in a Bible-believing crowd, and you go, hey, you know what? You know, Genesis 5, 6, you know, Noah, flood. You know what really happened? You know what's in heaven and third heaven, right? Did you even know that there were third heaven, right? Second heaven, first heaven. And then they try to be like so smart, right? right? If your purpose of listening to all this is to just grow your knowledge and become a proud, you know, you know, haughty person, then you have the wrong, wrong purpose. You have the wrong motivation. Instead of doing those things, go out there and walk. Yes. Instead of doing those things, you need to exercise, Amen. right? Again, your bodily exercise, a lot of times, will translate to how committed you are. Spiritual exercise. When you go backwards, because it has to be balanced out. If you do one or the other so much more, many times, one will die. Yes. A lot of, lot of, you know, great Bible believers, some of them died, left. Why? Because they didn't take care of the other one. Temple of God. They didn't take it seriously. Can you do anything if you're with the Lord right now? Can you win this? Can you talk to the lost soul out there? No. I mean, praise the Lord, you're with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. But you left too early because you did not take care of your body. Then, when you think about, okay, spiritual exercise, spiritual exercise is very important, you do have to think about bodily exercise that comes along with it. You will, you will not hear it too many times, right? You don't hear this kind of preaching because many of the preachers, you know, don't get me wrong, right? Many of the preachers will not take care of their body. Especially, you know, folks in the South. Everything's fried. I mean... They fry Twinkies, they fry donuts, I mean, everything's fried. And then fried food, what is it going to do to you? 
yeah. it's gonna elevate your cholesterol. It's gonna make your bill, I mean, belly bigger, right? It's just gonna make you become more unhealthy and unhealthy. Right. You can't tell God that God, I'm gonna eat however I want. You take care of me because I preach your word. God, I'm gonna study the word of God for next five hours. So let me just go to the buffet and eat 10 plates, okay? God, you know, I'm going to listen to this, you know, Bible studies, and I'm going to just sit down and eat all this junk food for the next five hours. And then you're asking God, God, why am I hurt? Why is my heart hurting? Why is my internal organs hurting? You know, why can't I move like I used to when I, I'm doing your work? Because God's going to tell you, like, you fool. You're not taking care of my temple, which is your body. Then you have to understand that, you know what? In order for me to exercise spiritually well, I need to take care of the temple of God. Bodily exercise is needed as well. I mean, don't go the other way. That's why, you know, our church, we always, you know, starting from Pastor Kim, we always preach balanced life. Amen. Balance. You have to have balance, Amen. right? And if you feel like, you know what, I'm too old to do it, you know, that's an excuse, right? I mean, there's stories. There are many, many stories. You know, whether they're saved or not, it's an inspirational story. Right. This lady in her late 70s got into a car accident. And she could barely walk. And doctors say, you might never walk. But she had a determination. You know, I'm going to walk. And then she started exercising. Exercising, exercising, exercising. Someone who doctor diagnosed that she might never walk again, she's running now. She's running marathons. Amen. At the late 70s. I mean, she might be 80 now, you know. This is stories a couple years old. Then you're saying that, oh, you know, I'm too old to do it. How old are you, right? I'm too weak to do it. How weak are you? Yes. And you always can find an excuse not to do it. I mean, with, after you get surgery at a hospital, it's hard to move. They give you what? You know, helper, right? Oh, or a walking cane or, you know, those things. You use it, and then you walk slowly. Because why? You have to use the restroom, right? You go slowly, slowly. And then time passes by, and it becomes a lot easier. And then you're like, get rid of that walking cane. You know, yes. I could do it on my own. Because it improves. Because you're doing it because it's very important to you. It becomes part of your necessity. Like, bodily exercise needs to be your necessity in your life, right? Again. Balance is important. I don't want anybody to become like, you know, competing in bodybuilding exercise, you know, platforms, and then suddenly you're like, oh, yeah, you know, Pastor Jay told me to exercise. So you go on to the other end, right? And then you have, you know, nothing about the Word of God now, you know? Don't fall into that trap either. You have to do both, you know, well. Then when it comes to spiritual exercise, so if you read your Bible, Right? If you sanctify yourself, you know, separate yourself from sin, and then you, when you surrender your all to the Lord, what happens? What are the results of spiritual exercise? The you know, number one thing is that it keeps you from sin. Spiritual exercise will, number one, keep you from committing sin. Have you ever wondered, why do I continue to sin when I shouldn't? Why? Because you don't exercise spiritually, right? If you were to exercise spiritually, if you were to, you know, sanctify yourself through the truth, which is the word of God, John 17, 17, yes. then you're going to get stronger. Amen. You're going to have more immunity to certain sins because of the word of God. Yes. You know, sometimes like, why do children get shots? Because they want to be immune from certain diseases, right? You know, even if they face it. So many Christians can be immune to certain sin 
if you continuously exercise, but you don't. That's why you're not immune to it. Again, as a human being, there's no such thing as never, never, right? right. You, you, you could always fall. However, it could really keep you from that sin if you exercise spiritually. Yes. I mean, Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil and flee fornication. And if you constantly study the Word of God and you meditate in the Word of God and you put it into action, Amen. when those situations do come up, what are you going to do? You're going to defeat it. Yes. Or you're going to keep yourself away from it. Amen. I mean, if there is a person out there and then they're known as a seducing person, whether man or woman, around your circle and you know about it, but they're good looking or they're pretty, and then they call you because they want to go out with you. What are you going to do? When you already know what has happened in the past, when you already know what's going to happen, if you've been exercising spiritually, you're going to say no. Why? Because the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. However, if you're weak, right, because you haven't exercised, what are you going to do? You're going to give in to it. You know, a lot of times people, you know, who doesn't do bodily exercise? Obviously, they don't do spiritual exercise. When food comes to their table, because, you, you know, dieting is very necessary, right? You could resist if you've been exercising, right? But if you haven't, what's going to happen? You're going to start eating it. It's like midnight. You haven't been able to go to sleep. And you know you shouldn't eat. Right. And suddenly, you know, you see this Pop-Tart, right? Or you see what? Any other fanning food out there, you know, finger food. Ah, it's okay, you know. I'm just going to eat it. And a lot of times you don't eat just one. You eat, you know, as much as you can until you realize, oh, man, I shouldn't have eaten it, Right? That's how it becomes. If you don't exercise spiritually, instead of keeping you from sin, you're going to eat those sin. You're going to eat as much as you can. And you don't even realize it. And then once you realize it, it's what? Oh, man, you look at your stomach. Man, you can't breathe, right? It's hard to breathe or it's like you have that bad feeling. You know? yes. I don't know about young kids, but as you get older, if you eat too much junk food, oh, yeah. you know, adults here, yes. it doesn't feel good. No. I mean, it, it really doesn't. If it does, probably you've had it too much. So your body is like addicted to it, <laughs> right? Just like alcohol, just like, you know, cigarettes. It hurts. It, sh it shouldn't. But you let your body go like that. Instead of exercising the body, you know, you're what? Polluting the body. And instead of exercising spiritually, you're polluting your spiritual body. Good. That's why number one thing is that if you keep your spiritual exercise, it's going to keep you from sin. Amen. And number two is what? Number two is that it strengthens the inner man. It strengthens the inner man, right? I mean, we have old nature and new nature. Yes. If you're saved, you're a new creature. Amen. Which one would you rather build up? Which one would you rather be stronger, right? If you exercise spiritually, your new man will get stronger, right? Think about it. You know, there's always illustration, right? You know? And then so there's a new man and there's the old man, new nature and the old nature. If you feed and if you make you know, new nature becomes stronger. What happens? It's going to grow. But if you don't, the old nature is going to grow. Then what do you think is going to happen? The more you exercise, the new man is going to grow, and the old man is going to become weaker. Amen. Why do you think that you constantly lose to your flesh? Because it's stronger than the new man. You let your old nature constantly rule over you. True. That's why you become so tired when you're listening to preaching. Preach. That's why you become so tired when you read the Word of God. 
I mean, literally, why is it that when you're out there playing and exercising and doing what you love to do, you're so fired up? I haven't seen any of you guys, when you guys are at a sporting event, you fall asleep, where you love to go and you went there because you bought the ticket, because you love the team, and you love the excitement and the thrill, right? I mean, whether it's a local team side, whether you go to Dodgers game, Angels game, right? You know, bad basketball teams, you know, or soccer teams. You go there. Why? Because you want to see some excitement. Because in, during those tam- times, you know that you'll be up and enjoying it. But why is it that, you know, when it comes to the Word of God, you give all that strength, you give all that attention to your old nature, but when it comes to you, the new you, new creature, where you should be excited just like you're in a Super Bowl, you should be excited just like when you're in a World Series, you should be excited just like when you're in a Stanley Cup, where reading the Word of God, right, in a World Cup, right? And then you're so excited because, man, I'm getting so much out of it. You, you get thrill out of it, right? And then you read the stories, and you're like you're part of the story. Yes. You're inside the story, and you apply it to your life, and you constantly meditate and think about it. But you don't do it. I mean, you're like, oh, man, the Word of God. It's going to make me fall asleep, so I'm going to read. <laughs> Whoa, preaching. You know, I don't want to listen until it's going to wake me up. How many times, you know, people ignore preaching? Because they get pricked in their heart. And they don't want to wake up. They don't want to move, right? I mean, whenever you have a personal trainer, you usually have to do something. Because those great personal trainers will not leave you alone. Right? They're going to be on you. And I think we have a couple of personal trainers here, you know, who would like to be. All right. They'll be on you and on you. They're going to make sure that you do your reps. They're going to make sure that you do your cardio. They're going to make sure that you do the exercise that you were supposed to do. And as preachers, you know, as pastors preach to you, you know, you know, counsel you and talk to you, you know, a lot of times, you know, people who doesn't want to exercise spiritually, they don't care, right? They they don't want to feed, they don't want to exercise their inner man. They will rather feed their old nature. So that's why... You know, some of you might be here, but I know that your mind is somewhere else. Because your body is like, you know what, forget it. You know, I don't want to listen to this exercise. And I don't want to exercise spiritually. You know what, you know, I listen to my own body. You know, I'm I'm just going to tune it out. I'm just going to sleep. I mean, some people do that even in the internet, right? You know, you want to have it on your record. So I clicked and I, I was there, right? But the whole time you're just doing every something else, right? You know, preaching is like 50 minutes, hour, 45 minutes. And you're, like, you're doing something else the whole time. And then you're just, you know, saying, look at me. And then you just want to prove. <laughs> it's like someone who has a gym membership but never goes there really. Or goes there, you know, and then comes out after five minutes. <laughs> like you do some kind of cardio or you just walk around, you know, go use the restroom or drink some water and come out. And you're like, you know what? I exercise today. But you, literally, you didn't do anything. Wow. You just fed your, you know, old nature, right? You're like, you fed your old nature. You didn't want to do anything, but you just wanted to have a proof. Man, that's the wrong mentality that Bible believers, or anybody, any Christians have. You think that you're just here, you're sitting down, and you've done everything. You haven't done nothing. True. What you do outside of church is literally what you really are. Right? Do you do spiritual exercise outside of church? Inside of church and Friday street preaching, you know, when we do visitation, you're going to do it because 40 other people are doing it. 50 other people are giving you strength to do it. But when you're by yourself, when you're just by yourself out in the world, do you, do, do you still do it? I mean, do you still go out there and, and to do that spiritual exercise? Do you still go out there, start hearing these cusses from other people because you're preaching the word? Do you get a lot of rejection because people don't want to see that track? I mean, does this ever happen to you? I mean, do you ever exercise spiritually? Or is it only you have become 
church only, church days only exercise crowd. You don't want to become church days only. I mean, it will help you grow, but you can't just stay only today. Yes. It has to go out. Amen. Think about it. You know, you go to a seminar and they tell you how to exercise. Right? You write all the notes down. And then you're playing it in your head how you're going to exercise. And then when you get home, you set the time for yourself. You know, at you know, 7 p.m. after you know, eating dinner at 6, you know, I'm going to go and do that exercise. Truly, truly, you know, dedicated person or even someone who takes it seriously will do it. The majority of the people won't do it. Why? Because I'm, I'm in the same boat, right? You play it in your head, you know, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. When the time comes, you find more excuses not to do it, you know. Suddenly, you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. You know? I mean, how many of you guys always say, tell yourself, I'm going to do it tomorrow? Guilty. You know what I mean? I'm going to do it tomorrow. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read my Bible tomorrow. I'm going to listen to that preaching tomorrow, Bible study tomorrow. I'm going to go witness tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to do all this tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Unlike your work and unlike some of your, you know, exercise or commitment to meeting people, spiritual stuff is not mandatory. As in, to you, it's not mandatory. To your new man, it's mandatory. But to you, it's not mandatory. You think like that when you should be thinking that it's mandatory. Just like going to work, just like, you know, doing homework, just like meeting people yeah. at a designated time. But when it comes to spiritual exercise, they're like, nah, I'm not going to do it today. I'll do double tomorrow. I mean, that's a baloney. How many of you guys actually do double or triple or quadruple like when you miss doing something? There's reason why it has to be a continuous you know, exercise. Yeah. It, there's daily routine. <laughs> if I were to exercise today, of the whole week's ex worth of exercise, say seven hours, right? I was going to exercise one hour per day. Since I missed it all, so today I'm going to exercise seven hours. Oh. What do you think is going to happen to me for the rest of the week, right? I probably won't be able to move, done. right? I'm done. I can't really do anything. So you can't try to crunch it and then procrastinate and do everything at once. You have to remember that spiritual exercise keeps you from sin. Spiritual exercise will strengthen your new man. Amen. And thirdly, spiritual exercise enables prayers to be answered. Do you know why a lot of times your prayers aren't answered? Because you're living in your iniquity. Iniquity. You're living in sin. Yes. I mean, you don't exercise spiritual body. So what do you think is going to happen? I mean, the Lord's not going to answer someone who's constantly sinning. Right? right? I, mean, but that's, I mean, that's what... You know, book of Isaiah 59, 2 said. I mean, Lord said it, so Lord's not going to go against his word. Lord wants you to be separated, sanctified, and pure and holy. Yes, and in order to be sanctified, in order to have your prayers answered, you have to exercise spiritually. How do you expect Lord to answer you when you don't do anything that Lord tells you to do? You don't read the word of God. You don't pray right? You don't have a good relationship with the brethren, right? You don't admonish one another. You don't love the brethren. You are full of envy. You hate each other, right? You know, hypocrites everywhere, gossiping, rumors. And then do you expect Lord to be like, okay, child, since you're my child, you know, I'm just going to answer your prayer. You know, just ask me for anything. I'm your genie. You know, yes, yes, yes. It never works like that. You got to get out of that, you know, mentality, right? Yes. Let me see. Why has some things, you know, why, why haven't things like worked out in my life? You know, why do I feel like so sluggish spiritually? You know, there's no joy, you know, when it comes to spiritual stuff, you know, there's this, I mean, depression, discouragement, you know, no, no happiness. Why? I mean, let's go back to your spiritual exercise. I mean, do you exercise spiritually at all? Right? 
the more you exercise spiritually, the closer you get to God. The closer walk you have with God. The less spiritual exercise you do, the further away you are from the Lord. I mean, probably you're like yelling, Lord, you're praying, but Lord can't even hear you. I mean, there's like a big gap. I mean, I mean, obviously, he's inside of you, he hears you, but, I mean, illustration-wise, it's as if, you know, you're so far away from him that you can't even really reach out to him. People who, who doesn't exercise spiritually, a lot of times, never go to the Lord. They don't. They don't have closer relations with the Lord. They try to solve everything on their own. They go to their psychiatrists, psychologists. They go to their counselors, right? They go to their teachers. They go to their grandma, grandpa. They go to everybody out there except the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't go. They think that they're the one who's going to answer my prayers. They think that they're the one who's going to make things happen when Lord controls everything. I mean, that's why, just think about it. When you exercise spiritually, your prayers will be answered. And you know, yes, no, maybe, right? But you know the Lord's answering your prayers because you're close to him, because you're exercising. And fourthly, you know, with spiritual exercise, he lays up treasure in heaven. Right? Now, don't you guys want any, you know, you know, brother pray, right, about judgment seat of Christ. As a Christian, that's like the most important doctrine. I mean, what you do for the Lord after you got saved, everything will be judged. Literally judged, 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 judged. Everything will be judged. I mean, the thoughts that you have right now will be judged. The actions that you do right now will be judged. Everything will be judged. And knowing the terror of the Lord, so it's not going to be a party up there. Judgment of Christ is going to be terror, horrible. It's going to be scary. You have to be fearful of it. Why would Apostle Paul write that? I mean, one of the holiest men who ever lived on earth, knowing the terror of the Lord. So if you know, and if you, part of spiritual exercise is knowing that there's judgments that are Christ waiting for me. Telling yourself every day, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged for what I do with this book today. I'm going to be judged with what I do with this today. I'm going to be judged with what I do with this today, with this today, with this today, with my feet today, and everything. Yes. You got to be judged. If you, as a Christian, constantly remind yourself and then do this spiritual exercise of remembering judgments of Christ, then you're going to sin 10 times less than you're doing right now. If you know that you're going to be judged for what you're about to do, and you tell yourself that 100 times every single day, I'm telling you, you're not going to do it. Maybe here and there you'll still fall, but you're not going to do it like you used to or you're going to. I mean, tell a kid, you eat that can cookie, you're going you're gonna to get severe punishment. So the kid's like, knowing the terror of my mom, you know, I'm not going to eat. and I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. And your hand's going to the cookie, you're like, no, I'm going to be judged. Man, when, once my mom gets angry, oof, you know, there's no tomorrow for me, so I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm not going to do it, you know. I'll, I'll just do something else. But and then each day goes by, and you're like, you know, sometimes, first day, you're, you, you touched it, but you didn't eat it. Second day, you almost touched it. Man, third day, you looked at it. And then fourth day, uh, you kind of looked at it. And then starting fifth day, you don't even care about it. Because you're like, man, you know what? Nah, I'm not going to play around with that. You know, I'm going to be judged if I eat it. That's how you have to become. You want to lay up treasures in heaven? Amen. Think about judgments of Christ. Yes. Think about it every day. Amen. Think about it right now. Right? How you are sitting, how you are listening, how you are thinking, everything will be judged yes. at the judgments of Christ. I mean, Lord is a very, very detailed person. 
I don't have to tell you that. Just look at your Christian walk before and after you got saved. Don't you think that Lord will remember every millisecond of your thoughts? Yes. Don't you think Lord's going to, you know, judge every, every moment of your life? Yes. Lord, jealous God, terrible God, who will send a soul to eternal lake of fire in hell forever. Think about it. I mean, that is a, I mean, that's a terrible, terrible, horrible judgment. Thinking that a soul will be burning in eternal lake of fire, not just for 1,000 years, 10,000 years, 50,000, 100,000, million, billion, trillion. No. Lord will send that soul to hell for all eternity. Think about it, forever. Right. That is a, Fearful God. Yes. You think that Lord who judges that fairly will not judge you as his loving child? That's why at the judgment seat of Christ, every thought, every action, you got to be judged. I don't know when you got saved, brethren. If you've been saved for a while, man, I think, you know, you got to get on your knees and, you know, you got to get right with the Lord about a lot of yeah. stuff. Right. If you've been saved recently, you still got to get right with the Lord yeah. about a lot of things, right? That's why it is very important when it comes to spiritual exercise that you think about judgment seat of Christ, which will lead you to lay up treasure in heaven. That's why it is very important, you know, for you to surrender everything. Amen. Surrender every part of your life to the Lord, right? Every part, right? You know, you can't be just saying that, you know, only Sundays I'm going to surrender to the Lord. Rest of the days is for me. Or like, you know what, even on Sundays, you know, I'll surrender to the Lord for a certain period, but, you know, it's, I'm going to have my me time, right? You know, how many of you guys say I'm going to have my me time? And your time is always a simple time a lot of times, Right? Because they're not doing anything that's glorifying God, per se. That's why you have to surrender everything, all your thoughts to the Lord. If there's something bothering you, if there's something hindering you, where it has been obstacle in your spiritual exercise, then bring it to the Lord. Yes. I mean, you have to get right with the Lord. Confess your sins like 1 John 1, 9. Get right with the Lord. It's not that hard. It's just that you can't just break your pride. That's why it becomes hard. Amen. You got to break your pride, yes. right? You got to remember that you're just a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Remember that you've been at fault. Remember that I've been the problem. Just remember, not everyone else, not someone sitting next to you, in front of you, behind you, up there, down there. It's you right. are the problem. Tell yourself, I've been the problem. You know, I've always tried to look at excuses at other people. You know, the reason I haven't exercised bodily, I haven't exercised spiritually, is because of me. Because I've been the lazy bum. Yes. I've been procrastinating. I haven't been right with the Lord. Then you admit that to the Lord. I mean, why? Because the Bible says God's going to give you strength. Right? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. We strengthen as me. Then you get that strength from the Lord. And spiritual exercise becomes easier and easier. You know, exercise is something that gets easier as time passes by, as you do more and consistently. Spiritually speaking, same thing. Yes. The, constantly, the more you exercise spiritually on a daily basis, you get closer to the Lord, right? You become more spiritual, you become yes. more sanctified, and you'll be full of truth, which is the Word of God. Do not neglect this spiritual exercise. Let's pray. Thank <laughs> you.